Well, I've been involved in the voluntary sector most of my working life. I started off doing a degree in sociology and research, and then my first job was for a single parents charity called Gingerbread, and so that led me into a career in charities. Though the majority of my work has been with older people, and I've worked in organisations such as Age Concern, I was a trustee of Age Concern England, and chief executive of three Age Concern organisations in London, and then I was lucky enough to get this job, and so in representing uh, care providers. I deal with care providers who supply s uh, support and care to older people, to people with learning disabilities, to people with brain injuries and to some mental health support services as well. I think the care sector has been very slow in embracing technology and I think partly it's because the care sector recognises it's a people-to-people -people organisation and I think that's true but I don't think we should uh, underestimate the power of technology in terms of its ability to deliver better quality services to people who use care but also to make great efficiencies in the way in which services are provided. So for example I saw a fantastic thing which was essentially a plug-in with a timer and it was to help people who were living with dementia and who forgot to eat and about half an hour before meal times the smells of their favourite food permeated the room and then that helped them to remember that they had to eat. I've also seen some great things where, for example, people might get out of bed in a care home and a tunnel of lights will direct them to their ensuite bathroom. I've seen examples where pressure pads can be used to identify whether or not people are either in bed or having a restless night. All these things are very small, very cheap, but can make a really big impact on the quality of care to the person who's living in a care service. I think the NHS could do a lot more with new technology and I think we've seen with things like technological ways in which diagnosis can be developed which show that it's much more accurate than using people to diagnose so I think there are some things around that. I think there are some really interesting things that can be done with people who have long-term conditions so I saw a very interesting program where people were being uh, given Fitbits and for example changes in temperature which was showing the prelude to a urinary tract infection were being noted at an early stage and then people were putting in proactive medicines so that people didn't go down the road of the infection putting them into hospital so I think what we've got to do is use technology in a myriad of different ways but our focus must always be First of all, how does it help and improve the patient experience? Secondly, how does it make sure that we're more accurate in our diagnosis? And thirdly, how does it improve efficiency so there's more money to spend on new treatments and new interventions?